Hello, my name is Peter Raymer. Today we're going to look at how to change security in Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance and operations. A couple of videos back we looked at the various security objects in D365. We looked at roles, duties, and privileges and how these are groupings for menu items and that we can assign these roles to users and then the users can see these menu items in the system. One video back we looked at how we can change and customize security in D365 using the security configuration form. This is a really useful tool for changing security. However, those changes are saved in data. In order to move those changes to another environment, you would need to export and re-import that data. And so it can be um, a trick to maintain consistency across your environments. So the preferred method is to make any changes using the application explorer. This way those changes are in code and get moved with the rest of your custom code um, to other environments. So we look, we're gonna look at two different examples. In this video, we'll just cover the first example. Let's get started. Let's pretend you have a user who has a role and so I'm going to go to the user's form in Dynamics 365. And so here I am in the user's form. I'm going to click on the PRAMER um, user to drill into the details of this form. On this form, there's user roles, and you can click on assign roles to assign roles. Um, this user has the retail operations manager role. Well, let's just pretend that I want this user and this role to have access to the customer reason codes form. This is pretty random. This is just a made up example. You can um, substitute it for whatever you're trying to do. Well, the customer reason codes form typically does not exist um, in the retail operations manager role. And so the first question you wanna ask is, does it make sense to modify this role and add that um, form, that menu item to this role? Very often the answer is no, and you wanna find the role that does have access and permission to this menu item, and you wanna add that role to this user. Um, that's usually the most common solution. But occasionally there may be some situations where adding that role would be would provide too much access for the user. And so in that case, you can customize this role to add additional duties or privileges that have access to this particular menu item um, and you can add it to this role. So in the last video, we I showed you how to do that using the security configuration form. Um, in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can make that change in the application explorer um, using Visual Studio. So again, we're gonna add an existing menu item, an existing privilege to an existing role. So first we found what role we wanna modify. It's called Retail Operations Manager. The next thing we need to do is understand what privilege contains the menu item that we would like to add to this role. So if I come over to the Customer Reasons Codes, which you can find by just typing Customer Reason Codes into your search. This is under Accounts Receivable Setup Customer Reason Codes. On this form, you can click on options and you can do this on any form you have and select security diagnostics. This is going to show you all of the security objects that have access to this menu item. Um, so I can see all the roles. So again, speaking earlier, maybe we need to add a, one of these existing roles to this user rather than modify the existing role, but for this example, we're gonna pretend um, that's not what we wanna do and we wanna customize our role. So I can see that there are two privileges um, that contain this menu item. One's called maintain customer reason codes and one's called view customer reason codes. Well, these are the English language labels of the privilege, but what I really need to understand is what are the AOT names. So when I'm searching for this within Visual Studio, 
what do I need to search for? And if I click this show object identifiers button, it's actually going to show me their AOT name. So I can see this is called Cust Reasons Maintain, and this one's called Cust Reasons View. So, okay, I've got the name of these privileges, um, but how do I find the name of this role? If I go to Visual Studio and I actually try to, um, I'll clear out my search, I can go to the security node, I can see all my security objects, I can expand the security roles, I'll notice that none of these have spaces and they're not in the same format of this label. Now, if you are working um, with the English language, usually these labels will match pretty closely to their AOT name just without spaces. So I found Retail Operations Manager um, is the same thing. But that's not always the case, and so this is not a very robust way of finding what role, what AOT name corresponds with this role. So another way we can do that is actually to go to the security configurations form. So again, um, if you're following along, you can type security configuration in this top search bar. It's under system administration, security, security configuration. So if I come into this form, this is actually gonna show me all the roles in the system. And if I scroll down and I find the one that matches our label, so I'm looking for um, Retail Operations Manager, and I click on it, it's actually gonna just change the display here in the middle, and I can see the AOT name of that role. I can see it's Retail Operations Manager. Perfect, so I found the AOT name of the role, I'd like to change and I found the privilege or two different privileges that contain the menu item that I would like to have inside this role. So let's go back to Visual Studio and look at what we need to do next. The first thing we need to do is we need to um, extend this role. Um, and in order to do that, I need a project. I can see that this role is defined in the application suite model, um, which um, if you wanna learn more about models, I have a few videos out about that. Um, but this is a base Microsoft model, which means I cannot open this and change this role directly. I must extend it. And so there's a few different ways I can extend it um, by right clicking, but first let's create a project. To create a project, I can say File, New, Project. And then I'm gonna look for the Finance and Operations template. Um, if you've typed it in before, it should be on the recent side. Otherwise, you can search for Finance Operations. This will show up if you've got this installed in a cloud-hosted development environment. And I'm using Visual Studio 2019, so this might look slightly different for you. Then you can click Next, you can provide a name and then click create. I'm gonna go ahead and close out of this because I've already created a project the same way. So once I have a project, mine's named Extend Security Node, um, the next thing you need to do is you need to make sure that this project is set up um, to be in the correct model. So you need to remove any objects you already have in it um, and then right click and select Properties. Then under the property model, you need to set this to your custom model. In my case, it's called Dynamics 365 Musings. You have may, maybe created a different model. Again, I have a video on how to create a model. Um, then go ahead and click OK. Now that we've got a project set up with our custom model, we're able to extend this role. And the way we extend it is we right click on it and we say create extension. When we do that, a new object will be created and um, it's actually this one right here. I've gone ahead and already created it. It'll get added to your Solution Explorer window. Next, you can right click on this object and say open and this will open it up into um, this main window screen right here. Initially, there won't be any nodes um, kind of inside of it, none of the privileges. You'll just see gray text um, to show you all of the um, duties that are part of the base 
object, but we really need to extend it. So we've created the extension of this role. Now we need to add privileges to this role. The way we add privileges is we can right click and say new privilege on this node and then type in the name of our privilege or we can drag the privilege from our AOT window over here um, and drag it to the privileges node. But again, which uh, we actually have two privileges. So which one should we add? So let's take a minute to look at that. So if I actually type in cust reasons into the search and hit enter, this has the benefit of showing me both of the privileges side by side. I could have cleared this out and browsed to it directly, um, but now I just see these by themselves. So what's the difference between these two privileges? Which one should we add? Let's go ahead and open them. If I right click and select open designer on customer reasons maintain, and I expand this entry points node, I'm gonna see a menu item called cust reasons. And if I select that menu item and I select properties, I can actually see the access level in this um, menu item. And here I can see an access level of delete. And if I click the drop down, I can see all the different menu items. There is one for no access, there's one for read, update, create, correct, and delete. And the further down I select, um, this access level has all the permissions of any higher up um, node that I would select. So read would only provide access to the user to be able to read the data on this form. They could view it, but they couldn't make any changes. If I select update as the access level, they would be able to update data, but they wouldn't be able to create or delete. If I select create, they would be able to read, update, and create data, but they wouldn't be able to delete data. If I select delete, they'll be able to delete data as well as all the above. So in this case, this privilege says that the user, if a user is assigned a role that contains this privilege, they will have delete access level and they will be able to do whatever they need to on this form. If I look at the cust reasons view, I can open that and expand entry points and select it and look at the properties. And here, this one has the access level of read. So depending on which I want my user to be able to do, just view data or to maintain the data, that's gonna determine which privilege I should add to my extension role. It's pretty common as a best practice that you will see privileges that end in view. These privileges are gonna have entry points with a read access level, and then maintain are often gonna have a higher access level such as delete. Um, but you definitely wanna double check as that's not a hard and fast rule, um, but you can kind of use that as your guide. So again, if I open my extension, I can actually drag in my security privilege that I wanna add. So if I drag this in, um, it'll get added here. I've already actually already added it, so that's why it's giving me an error. But now that I've added this to my security role, my security role extension, all I need to do is build and compile this code, and now my user that has this role will be able to view that menu item and I can check this code into source control and I can move it as part of a package to test stage and production environments. This is really the preferred uh, way of modifying and changing security within D365. So in summary, you've learned how to um, extend a security role. We've looked at how to find the AOT names for a security role that we'd like to modify, as well as the AOT name for a privilege that contains our menu item that we'd like to add to our security node. Um, in the next video, I'll show you how to create all these security objects from scratch if you've got your own new menu item and you'd like to create new roles. Um, but this covers how we would modify and change an existing security role um, in D365. Okay, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you watching. 
If you liked the video, click the like button. I also invite you to push the subscribe button as well. If there's other topics you would like to see a video on, please post in the comments and I'll see what I can do. I hope you learned something new today. Thank you.